going everybody? Ty Campbell here with another episode of Teak and Builds and in this week's episode we're actually going to be starting our next build which is a Team Losi Racing 8XE A-Scale Full Drive Electric Buggy Kit. I'm really excited about this car. I haven't built an e-buggy in a hot minute but we're going to get started on this one today and a few cool things about the 8XE are the new improved suspension geometry. It looks like TLR made some changes from the last platform. Uh, they changed the suspension arms, look like they're more of a solid design. The chassis has been whitened for a little bit more stability and to give the buggy a more neutral feel. And they also have the adjustable spindle carriers which are included in the kit. This thing looks like it's loaded with hop-up parts so I'm hoping we won't really have to do a whole lot to this other than put it together, install our electronics, get a body painted up and go hit the track. So let's crack this box open and get started. It's like some highlighter yellow wheels. I'm gonna get white ones. Got the new 8XE body. I like the shape of this, kind of reminds me of a Falcon. Send that off to get painted. And all of our parts bags. User manual. And our chassis plate. So we'll go ahead and start with our instruction manual so we know what we're starting with. I have a feeling it's going to be differentials. Alright, so we're starting with bag A. Looks like that is our differentials. So let's get some diffs built. start with bag A for our 8XE, which is the differentials. Let's see what we're working with here. I'm actually not going to use the 1010 setup for the diff oils. Uh, that's more of a tight track, you know, if it's really grippy, if it's edgy and the car is uh, twitchy with the lighter diff oil, that's when you'd go up to like a 1010 setup. I normally run a 573 setup, so it's 5,000 in the front diff, 7 in the middle, three in the rear. Sometimes I'll go down to two if the track's really loose and blown out. Let's get this rear diff put together. So we've got our O-rings right here. These are, these actually go inside the diff casing right here and that's what this high pressure black grease is for. And it's gonna be a little messy, but it's gonna be the best way to make sure that these are lubed up. You're also gonna wanna grease up this little ring in the outdrive. Flange bearing goes on the outside of the diff case. And then you'll take this little washer and then the pin for the sun gear just grab some needle nose and then you can line this pin up in the pin slot in the diff housing center that up take our sun gear drop that in make sure that seats all the way down and then we take our spider gears throw them on their shafts you want to leave this one with this little notch facing up. It doesn't matter which side you put this in. Make sure that that notch is facing up because this notch actually fits into that one. Holds them both together. So you'll have them sitting in there like that. And this is the ring gear. So you'll put flange bearing on the outside of here. Grease up this other outdrive. Grease up the o-ring just like we did on the other side. Take our washer in and drop the sun gear on on that side. So we'll take our 3000 weight, TLR specifies to fill this up to where it just covers the spider gears. Got our handy little skill driver available, tighten these guys down. Once I tighten those down I like to manually tighten these. This feels nice and smooth. So that's our rear differential done. We'll just repeat the same process for the front two. All right, so that's the first part of our build out of the way, the differentials. Now again, I went with a 5,000 weight in the front, 
7,000 weight in the center and 3,000 weight in the rear. I have never driven one of these cars before, but I've definitely been a TLR racer for a while, so that's normally where I set my car up to start with and then I change it track depending. So if the track's tighter, I'll usually go up in diff fluid, and if the track's looser, sometimes I'll go down in diff fluid. Now let's get to building some shocks. Now we're gonna put our shocks together. I went ahead and busted the bags open and laid all the parts out so that I could find them. I popped all of the balls into the shock eyelets. You can do that with a pair of pliers real quick. I stripped down one of the shock bodies already. We're just gonna go over this once and then you just rinse and repeat the process three more times for the other shocks. First thing we're gonna do is put this O-ring inside this adjustment collar and this just holds the collar tight to the shock body so that it doesn't move. Thread it up onto the shock body. Then we're gonna put the X-rings and the spacers in the bottom part of the cartridge area. So you do one X-ring, one spacer, another X-ring, and then this cap piece right here. There is an O-ring that goes over this to seal up the cartridge at the bottom and keep it tight. Take the cartridge cap, thread it on. I like to put just a little bit of shock oil down in the cartridge so that our X-rings are not dry when we go to put the shock shaft through. Now we take our cap, we take one of these, then you take a bleeder screw and one of these little washers, thread that in. We don't need to tighten this down all the way because we're gonna bleed the shock here in a sec. Now this is a rear shock body, so I'm gonna grab one of our longer rear shock shafts. One big washer, piston, smaller silver washer, and this little screw threads into the end of the shock shaft. Put a dab of Loctite on the threads because you don't want this coming loose during a run or your shock will hyperextend and fall apart. Use our shock shaft pliers to get it all the way snug. Then I just put a little bit of shock oil on the shock shaft. Gently insert the shock shaft and piston assembly into the shock body. And then we grab the shaft with the pliers, take one of our shock eyelets and thread that all the way on. Then we fill our shock with oil. We're gonna put 37 and a half weight in the rear. Fill that up just, just short of the brim. So we're gonna need room for shock shaft compression. So some of that's gonna get displaced. Work that up and down to get the air bubbles out. And top it completely off. Take our cap. We can tighten this all the way down. And now we're gonna bleed our shock Compress the shock fully. Tighten the bleeder screw down with the shock fully compressed. Now we take our spring and our spring cup. One little screw right here. This holds the spring cup on, which is really nice because sometimes these like to pop off and disappear. And now we've got our fully assembled shock. So we just repeat that process three more times for the other ones. So we got our shocks all assembled and they feel really smooth. Pretty happy with that. So we got shocks done, we got diffs done. Now, looks like we're moving on to building the front gearbox. Buckles, nobody's favorite, but a couple quick tips. I like to take a body reamer just to open up the hole a little bit to get them to start to thread easier and put a little bit of black high pressure grease inside the end. That way when you go to thread it in, it'll thread in nice and smooth and you'll be able to adjust it later while it's on the car. Snapping the balls in is fairly straightforward. These are extremely tight, so you're gonna have to push really hard. I did it on the edge of the table. About killed my fingers, but we got them done, so. <clears throat> So that's our front clip assembled. I put everything on except for the shocks. I always like to do the shocks last just to make sure everything's nice and free. And I'm pretty impressed with this kit. The tolerances are really good and I didn't have to ream the hinge pin points out in the arms for free motion, so that's nice. 
I really love that this came with the spindles and they are adjustable. We'll go over those at a later time. Came stock with a 2.3 sway bar on the front. That's normally what I used to run. You'll notice this screw right here is silver and the reason for that is because it's actually a left hand thread and that's so that whenever the suspension is cycling, this screw doesn't want to back out. Now that the front clip's done, we can go ahead and move on to the rear clip. our rear clip assembly all finished up with the chassis brace. I went ahead and threw the wing mount and the wing on. There are some optional wicker bills for this wing, two different heights, and that just changes the amount of downforce that the wing will give the car. Uh, so I'm going to leave those off right now. Again, this clip went together just as smooth as the front clip. Uh, I did put the arms on the wrong sides of the car, and so I had to take them off and start back over. I realized that once I saw that the shock mounts were on the wrong side. No big deal, I just flipped them real quick and now we've got our completed rear clip ready to go on the chassis. I also really like that TLR included the rear mud guards on this car. That just helps protect your rear CV shafts and your shock shafts from flying debris when out on the track. Smooth sailing so far. We've got our front clip finished, our rear clip is finished, our shocks are all assembled and oiled, our center differential is ready to go in the diff carrier for the chassis. So we're going to bust the chassis out, put the center diff carrier assembly together and get this thing to roller status. just about to roller status everything that's important is on the car we are to this stage right here we've got everything assembled I think this is a good place to stop right now for this episode and we'll pick it up next week when we dive into installing our electronics we'll get our RX-8 installed we'll get our T8 Gen 3 installed we'll get our Tekken T250 servo installed We'll throw a receiver in, we'll wire everything up, and then we'll go into some programming. TLR did a really good job on this car. There's a lot of design features that I like about it. Right now, I'm excited to get this thing finished so we can get it out on a racetrack and actually put some wheel time on it. I hope you're enjoying this new build series. Our 8-scale electric buggy is coming along pretty quick, and we're going to have it wrapped up and hitting the track here within the next couple of weeks. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Click that little notification bell down there at the bottom so you don't miss out on future content. Subscribe to the Tekken channel if you haven't already, and share with your friends so they can check it out too. I'm Ty Campbell. Keep it rubber side down. Mm -hmm.